everybody, and welcome back to the channel! My name is Amanda N, and today I'm talking about Edgar Allan Poe's death. Before I get there, I just want to say thank you so much to all the new people. I know that I don't exactly have a ton of subscribers, but there's still a lot more of you than there were a couple weeks ago when I'm recording this, so welcome! I hope you like it here! Anyway, we're going to talk about Edgar Allan Poe, a little bit about who he was, but we're mostly just focusing on his mysterious demise. There's a lot of theories about this, so let's not waste any more time and just dive right in. Edgar Allan Poe was a massive figure in the world of literature, obviously, I'm sure you recognize his name. He wrote The Raven, The Telltale Heart, Tamerlane, and plenty of other works that I'm sure you all were forced to read in school. Of course, he wasn't without struggles, he had gambling debts, substance abuse, a really complex and sometimes questionable life, honestly, whether by modern standards or not. According to one source, it was around this time in the late 20s slash early to mid 30s that he began to sell short stories to magazines, and in 1835, he became the editor of the Southern Literary Messenger in Richmond, where he moved with his aunt and cousin Virginia. In 1836, he married Virginia, who was 13 years old at the time. He was about twice her age at that point. Over the next 10 years, Poe would edit a number of literary journals, including the Burton's Gentleman's Magazine and Graham's Magazine in Philadelphia, and the Broadway Journal in New York City. It was during these years that he established himself as a poet, a short story writer, and an editor. He published some of his best-known stories and poems, including The Fall of the House of Usher, The Telltale Heart, and The Murders in Rue Morgue, as well as The Raven. After Virginia's death from tuberculosis in 1847, Poe's lifelong struggle with depression and alcoholism worsened. He returned briefly to Richmond in 1849, and then set out for an editing job in Philadelphia. For unknown reasons, he stopped in Baltimore. On October 3rd, 1849, he was found in a state of semi-consciousness. Poe died four days later of acute congestion of the brain. He was about 40 years old at the time. Evidence by medical practitioners who reopened the case has shown that Poe may have been suffering from rabies. Now, it's this death that strikes people as so odd, because, first of all, why was Poe found delirious in the streets of Baltimore if he wasn't supposed to be there? Poe wasn't just found in some alleyway either, but he was actually discovered near Gunners Hall on election day. Gunners Hall was a public house that served as a pop-up polling location for Fourth Ward polls. Edgar Allan Poe was discovered there by a man named Joseph W. Walker, a compositor for the Baltimore Sun. When Walker asked Poe if he knew anyone in the Baltimore area that could help him, Poe mentioned the magazine editor Joseph E. Snodgrass. Walker wrote Snodgrass a letter. It said plainly, Dear Sir, there is a gentleman, rather the worse for wear, at Ryan's Fourth Ward polls, who goes under the cognomen of Edgar A. Poe, and who appears in great distress, and he says he is acquainted with you. He is in need of immediate assistance. Yours in haste, Jos W. Walker, for Joseph, to Dr. J. E. Snodgrass. Poe was in a sane enough state to mention that he knew someone in Baltimore, so why wasn't he in a sane enough state to seemingly explain why he was in Baltimore in the first place? Of course, that's not to say if he did or didn't have rabies, I've got no idea, but it's so strange to me that he could, at least to some extent, be coherent enough to get help, but not explain what he was there for. At least as far as we know, because it's still a mystery to this day. The Smithsonian Magazine said that he was experiencing fits of delirium, and according to his physician, the night before his death, Poe was calling out to someone named Reynolds, who too is a complete mystery to this day. There's a lot of debate and strange accounts that swirl around his final days, though. Some say his attending physician dismissed the idea that he'd been drinking heavily, whereas his friend spread rumors that he was drunk. Some friend. It's also said that he couldn't remember where his luggage was, a doctor advised him not to travel before he left to Philadelphia, and his enemy wrote his obituary. One source states, One of Poe's professional and personal rivals, Rufus Wilmot Griswold, wrote a lengthy obituary for his enemy that was so libellous, Griswold signed it with a pseudonym. 
the article portrayed Poe as a mad, drunken, womanizing opium addict who based his darkest tales on personal experience. Griswold expanded this account into a brief memoir of the author, and Griswold's distorted picture of Poe influenced popular opinion of the author for over a century. With this strange cause of death and all these other odd, random tidbits and easter eggs about him and his obituary, things of that nature, well, it's hardly any wonder that people question what happened to Poe and whether or not rabies or something else more sinister played a role in his death. It helps that he's basically the father of horror novels, so people that admire his work may be a bit more inclined to theorize that something dark happened here. As for those theories, well, some suggest that he was beaten or perhaps fell into cooping. As Smithsonian Magazine states, cooping is a method of voter fraud practiced by gangs in the 19th century where an unsuspecting victim would be kidnapped, disguised, and forced to vote for a specific candidate multiple times under multiple disguised identities. Voter fraud was extremely common in Baltimore around the mid-1800s, and the polling site where Walker found the disheveled Poe was a known place that Coopers brought their victims. As an aside, this also might explain why he was found in secondhand clothes, or clothes that didn't appear to be his according to sources, because maybe he was forced to wear them for a disguised identity. This is a pretty widely accepted explanation, or that he was robbed and beaten by ruffians in a drunken state. However, frustratingly, neither of these really explain why Poe was in Baltimore instead of Philly in the first place. Of course, Baltimore was his home at one point, so maybe he was just in the area for old time's sake and stopping by, but it is on the way and his behavior is still questionable. He still could have made it to Philadelphia in a relatively short amount of time from Richmond, so why stop? Because no autopsy was performed, I'm not sure that we'll ever know for sure. If he was genuinely beaten and hit on the head, this could explain some of his behavior, but this still has a lot of holes in it. Other theories on the Poe Museum website list, well, just about everything. From dipsomania, to epilepsy, to rabies, to heart failure, to diabetes, to alcohol or carbon monoxide poisoning, there's just no shortage of theories out there. Some of them have been absolutely widely discredited, whereas others are more accepted. For example, public health researcher Albert Donay in 1999 argued that carbon monoxide or heavy metal poisoning were possibilities. However, when clippings of Poe's hair were tested, they were inconclusive for coal gas and well below mercury poisoning levels. Even though both of these possibilities would absolutely explain his hallucinations and delirium, because of their inclusivity, they don't seem likely. There is at least some evidence for the death by drinking theory as well, considering that his physician did warn him of such a thing. Susan Archer Talley West recalls in her biography, The Last Days of Edgar A. Poe, an event toward the end of Poe's time in Richmond that might be relevant to theorists that prefer a death by drinking demise for Poe. Poe had fallen ill in Richmond, and after making a miraculous recovery, was told by his attending physician that another such attack would prove fatal. According to Weiss, Poe replied that if people would not tempt him, he would not fall suggesting that the first illness was brought on by a bout of drinking. Those around Poe during his final days seem convinced that the author did indeed fall into that temptation, drinking himself to death. As his close friend J.P. Kennedy wrote on October 10, 1849, On Tuesday last, Edgar A. Poe died in town here at the hospital from the effects of debauch. He fell in with some companion here who seduced him to the bottle, which it was said he had renounced some time ago. The consequence was fever, delirium, and madness, and in a few days, a termination of his sad career in the hospital. Poor Poe, a bright but unsteady light has been awfully quenched. A sad career. I would love a career as sad as Edgar Allan Poe's. My goodness, he's so well known now. <laughs> but onto the especially strange theory, the one that I mentioned earlier, rabies. The median length survival for rabies is about four days after he was admitted to the hospital after all of these symptoms seemed to show themselves. He was admitted for delirium, hallucinations, varies in pulse rate, and rapid, shallow breathing, all of which are, again, symptoms of rabies. 
This was a somewhat common virus in the 19th century, at least far more common than it is today. However, while Poe exhibited a ton of these symptoms, he didn't experience all of them. A fear of water is a massive symptom, and Poe was said to be drinking water until he died. There was also no animal bite on him, though that could be explained away, it might have been small, sometimes rabies victims don't remember being bitten, so that one is a little bit more excusable. However, the most recent theory is a brain tumor. Since when Poe was exhumed to be moved to a new graveyard, there was a mass rolling around in his skull. Human brains decay, so it wouldn't have been that, but a tumor can actually calcify and become hard after death. This one really seems to be the most likely. Yet, as one article puts it, given the enduring popularity of Poe's work and the immense sense of the macabre that it conveys, it is unlikely that a brain tumor, as cause of death, will ever be fully accepted. After all, you can have a brain tumor and still get actually killed by something else. So did Poe have a brain tumor? Well, yeah, it seems that way, unless someone put something inside his skull after his brain already decayed, maybe? But was it the cause of his death? We have no idea. There is literally hard evidence for this one, so it's the one that I'm most inclined to believe, but I'd be really curious to hear what you guys think in those comments down below. The drinking himself to death theory also does seem to hold water, so I could believe in that one because it does seem like a possibility, maybe it's that and a combination of the tumor, maybe he did have rabies. We can't really say for sure, there was no autopsy performed, but I would be really curious what you guys think. Let me know what do you think killed Edgar Allan Poe, and let me know if there's any other stories that you'd like me to cover. There's a lot more of you here now, so feel free to shoot those suggestions my way in the comments. I try to read every single one, and thank you so much for being here. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!